Permit me to welcome the Senator representing Manabra Central, distinguished Senator Dr. Victor Mune Omanike. Please, may we put our hands together for him, the sponsor of this scholarship. Tiko Kaito Nia Nohama Dike Tukwete Nia Nohama Dike Ibo Bakre Ako Mata The Senator representing Anabra Central Sintela Zone, the Red Chambers Uh, Prince Festus, uh, Rebecca, 
is that for me, as a person, I realize very early in my life that education is the greatest weapon we can give to a young child. An educated child is already equipped to become anything in life. So I took to sponsoring people uh, through scholarship 17 years ago. That was when I set up. I was supporting people, you know, training people in school. They were coming to take money from me, from my mother and the rest of it. But in 2007, I decided to set up an education foundation. So that instead of people going to ask my mother for money, and my mother would tell me, and I'll provide money when I told them I would I said, let me set up a foundation where these children can have access to education. And I appointed, I set up a chairman committee of that foundation, met for a few two days there as chairman, and uh, Savoris Aveto as secretary. The third board member is there now, the body face of Minnesota Rest in Peace. They've been doing this work over the years. Three of them are my kinsmen. But my scholarship started from my children. I started training people from my own now, my kindred. So I set up the foundation and appointed these three people for my kindred to oversee them. And from their work, we have been able to rescue a lot of children in the past 17 years. From that foundation, we've been able to produce almost 300 university graduates. We have produced doctors, engineers, lawyers, accountants, all the professions, and teachers, and priests too. Because whenever people go to them for help, I ask them to take them. We continue to pay. We have people who have trained that are not even from Anambra states. We have Abakanic people. We have people from Imo states. So, um, all places. We pick children from everywhere and put in the foundation. We are doing it, and uh, I am very happy with it, the outcome. Because the people we have trained. I'm very happy and uh, they are meeting my expectation for setting up the foundation. If I give you stories of some people that were rescued, you may cry. But these were people who have lost hope. Some of them entered the university, maybe for one thing or the other, the person, their father or their mother, or person who took them to the university died and they were in danger of losing their admission. Once we, see, we saw such children, we took them. Many of them have graduated, even with first class. First class. So there, are, there is nobody who has passed through our foundation that was not in need of the help. People have been bringing children to me Clergyman, there was one boy from uh, Adukun, Venerable uh, Oyi, uh, brought him to me and said the father died. And the boy was a second year student at UNIS in Green George. I said, Is that what he said? I said, I'll take him. He finished and made a second class of admission. We have so many of such instances. One for them who went first class in chemical engineering. <laughs> we have doctors, some of them that have started with, uh, have become doctors. We have produced lots of people who have gotten PADs. We have produced about eight PAD holders for this application. <laughs> These are things we are doing without telling anybody. We are doing it out of my passion to help and support. And 
because I verily believe that education is the biggest weapon to need to fight both ignorance, poverty, and distress. And a poor child like a mustard seed in my family, with education, they can get to any length of any kind of life. They can apply only as one of my students to become president of Nigeria. get the degree and the end. No. In, for you to know that you are being prepared for leadership. If you don't have education, you cannot play that role. So um, it's something that we have decided to keep doing. There's one young lady from Nanka. Nanka is not an ambassador as you know. I have students from all over. One day we'll play a, a, a homecoming for everybody. You will see that people who have passed through us come from very far places, even in the local states. This young girl, girl who was a student at the University of Portacourt, student, medical student, second year before I died. She had lost hope of going continue with my education. So one day, because she she's from uh, Manka, a neighboring community to I was in, he made sure he, he kept a tab on me to know when I got to the village. One Sunday, she came to the church. I was in the church for mass. And when she got there, the mass ended. I came up, she had no courage to approach me, to tell me what she did. So when I left, I didn't know she was there. Somebody advised her to go and look for Father Peter, who was there. Father Peter was at St. Matthias Catholic Church, I was there, as parish priest. Yeah. St. Matthias, right? Yeah. St. Matthias, all over that. So the girl went there and saw her, I mean, saw him. The, told him her story and the, the plans and let her push on me. One day I came back to the village and suddenly the girl appeared. She didn't tell me she saw Parapita. Parapita didn't tell me that he was sending somebody to me. So she came in and very tactfully told me something. Uh, that caught my attention. She told me that she wants me to help her get a job. I said, what type of job do you want? And by the way, she introduced and said that her name is Juliana Mumen. Not my own Mumen, Mumen I can. <laughs> so I said, what is it? He said that she wants me to help her get a job. That she wants to do get employed somewhere so that she can be working. And when she saves enough money, she will go back to school. I said, which school? He said, looking at her, I don't care. He said, that she was a student at the University of Port Harcourt. I said, what are you doing there? He said, Mercy. Mercy caught my attention again. I said, what? So why do you want to go and work? He said, well, nobody will pay her food, but the father died. And she has no hope of continuing. But she wants me to help her get a job. So that she will work for about two, three years, save money, and go back to school. I said, You are really messy. She said, Yes. Yes, sir. I said, Are you sure? She said, Yes, sir. I said, You have things to show me that you are too really messy. Are you what? She said, Yes. She produced uh, evidence. I said, Okay. You go back to school now. No work for you. You go. You go back. Everything you will need, not just tuition, accommodation, and feeding. I'll give you full sponsorship. So you're there and there. 
I made available money, money to her to go back to the court. She went. And I was walking across. I, I, anybody I knew scholarship, I take the person as my child. So she didn't like anything. She faced her studies. And in 2001, she graduated in medicine and became the best graduating student. <laughs> In the University of Michael's College of Mercy, the whole College of Mercy, she came first. She made a distinction in surgery, she made a distinction in internal medicine. She was the brightest. She is in Abuja now. Yes. And when she passed out, she went to, uh, for housemanship. At Army Reference Hospital in Lagos. There, because she made distinction in surgery, one day a woman came with her child who twisted the first time in that hospital. There were no single doctors available except Dr. Julian Miller. And the child was about dying. Julian decided to operate on the child. She performed the surgery. And save that child to the mother, the parents of the child were crying, thanking her. She said, No, do not, do not thank me. I tell you, the person will die. Some of you may be a doctor. And she gave me my address. I told her, they called me. Those who are conversant with our women know Juliana's story. Because she brought the prizes. She won a three reports to our annual uh, education program and presented those awards. She's there. Somebody came to marry her. She said, No, I will not marry you unless you go and meet people who met me who are her. The boy who came to marry her, an engineer from the moon. So the boy thought that she was looking. She said, no way. And I gave my number and my address to the boy to come and meet me and my wife in. So the, the boy came and received him. He told us on his mission that he would like to marry Juliana. Because Juliana was such a disciplined girl. If you see her, you will see complete Human person in her. So the boy finished it. I said, No. You want to marry me? As soon as he told her that he would like to marry me, I, 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 I didn't like him again. <laughs> I didn't like the boy. Because I felt he would come and distract the girl. I knew the girl was back for the top. But she would do everything to excel. So I said, are you going to be stopped Are you going to marry this? Do you know who you want to marry? The boy said to me, I said, do you know that this girl? Because the boy said he's an engineer working with a company in Africa. I said, are you sure that whoever hurts this girl, whoever do anything that will make her cry? He said, you will not. I said, it's going to be a difficult thing for me to accept. But if you are sure that you must stand on her way, uh, towards living her life and pursuing her dream as a medical doctor and going further with her education, then I won't have any problem. But if you will ever hurt her, I will deal with you. They assured me that you will not. I said, okay, go and see my wife. I gave her, I gave her the address, go to see my wife. My wife told me the same thing. And Juliana is a child who don't want to the boy gave all the assurances. So we accepted our deal to marry them. The next one that Juliana said that myself and my wife really we are sponsoring their wedding in the womb. So we went there, our lady of Fatima Catholic Church in the and uh, we were in the sponsors. They are now happily married. They have 
by stakeholders, by clergymen, by some other organization and societies that look after this people. That's how we got 223 minutes. So I said, I'll pay your fees, full fees, all of you. <laughs> by the time, by the time their monies are transferred to your accounts, you will see that it may not be what you submitted that you got, you get something higher. <laughs> Yeah, you got no failure. Yeah. Nobody will have anything to... Yeah. 